Welcome everybody to today's tarot card deck review. I'm Misha and today I will be reviewing Wormwood's Corrupted Tarot deck. So let's take a look. So the Corrupted Tarot deck is a multi-artist deck and it was originally kind of inspired and, and pulled together by a gaming company called Wormwood and they do all sorts of like dice and games and things like that and it's pretty cool that they decided to do a tarot deck. This particular deck, you can see it is, oh, it's so pretty. It's got this beautiful dark black matte dot box and the, um, the suits are embossed on the front and it's the two piece type deck. And it is, it's got a uh, corrupted tarot by Wormwood on there. So two piece type deck box. And then inside I have a book and then the cards themselves. Now this is, Actually, I, I love boxes like this, so um, this makes me really happy. There's no way the cards can get damaged or anything and everything fits in here really nicely. So let's take a look at the book first. So we'll check that out. So the book is that same um, dark matte printing. It is full color and glorious. And so you can see all of the different cards in here. And you might notice like, hey, these all look a little bit different. And they should because the creators of this deck got together over 70 different artists to make it. But one of the things that I really want to point out, if you all have taken my classes, you know that I'm not a huge fan of decks like this where there's a bunch of different artists because sometimes the art can look really disparaging or like really different really and, and almost like disjointed. But that does not happen in this deck. And in a second, when I show you the cards, you'll see they actually did a great job keeping everything together. But in the book, you've got the artwork, nice and beautiful. You've got the artist, which is really cool. And then how to, how to follow them, which I think is a really nice touch for the artist. And then the meaning of the card. And this book is really lovely because the whole idea behind this deck was having a deck that was the opposite of the traditional meanings. So at the beginning of this booklet, they kind of explain that, and I'll talk more about that in a minute, but then you get the different meanings of, whoop, the different meanings of the cards. So here, for instance, we have the Fool, Blindness, Naivete, and trickery, trickery. Well, for those of you that know Tarot, you know that that is not really what the Fool means, but in general, that is more what the reverse meaning means. And sure enough, we have the classic meaning of the fool in the back. So this deck is all about, it's the corrupted tarot. So all of the cards, the artists were asked to draw them in a way that the art would represent the reverse meaning. And if you're new to tarot and you're not really sure like what the difference is, no worries because in the back of the book, it has all of the art, again, a little bit smaller, but really great that they included this. It's got the, the keywords that typically go along with each card and they do the whole deck, which is really nice. And then at the end, um, St uh, Stephanie Cost was the person who pulled all this together. So some acknowledgments for the artists and um, the backers and the whole, the whole event. So small guidebook but gosh like they packed a ton in here so really really good stuff so let's take a look at the cards themselves so i'll do a flip through for you we've got the fool the magician our high priestess oh i love that empress that's amazing the emperor and again the idea behind a lot of these cards that what the artists were asked to do was to show the reversal there's your lovers your chariot. That's a, I think that's a really great example of the reversed meaning of the chariot there with um, maybe things running away a little too fast, not being in control of your path. Uh, even, even that idea of that frenetic energy when you're going too fast, too soon, what can happen uh, literally getting carried away by, by the, um, the momentum that you're having. That's a great example. Strength. This is actually why I decided to get this deck. This is by the artist uh, Zia Hunt and they did the Children of Litha deck and the, the Nameless One deck, and I really love their work. So when I saw that this person was in this deck, I thought, oh, all right, I'll take a chance on it. And I'm really glad I did, because as you look at these cards, you can see that even though different artists did them, they really did a good job bringing in all of the kind of the same 
darkness, for lack of a better way to, to, to put it, kind of a gothy, I, I love this double card, oh my God, a kind of a gothy look to it, even though some of them are painted, some of them are more um, done, uh, done, uh, computer drawn. This is this is probably one of my favorite cards in the deck. The moon here is oh, so beautiful. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I'll zoom in. It's just, oh, there we go. It's gorgeous, that moon card. So yeah, I think the, the moon card is probably one of my faves. Let's take a look at some more. Got that gorgeous sun. So what a different type of sun card than we're used to seeing, right? Got the Judgment. I really like this judgment card too. The world. Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at the detail in that. Just incredible. Be careful what you wish for, right? You get the world and sometimes that might be far more difficult than you ever imagine. Okay, coming into the minors. So we have the wands. This is a great example. This is it's it's different art for sure than the next card. Or even the following. Oh, I love it. This this reminds me so much of like the Baba Yaga mythology. But it still is all staying connected. It all works quite well together. And that's really a credit to the artists that were putting this together as well as the art director who brought it all together too. That's a neat nine of wands. Look at that. Whoop! That nine of wands just fell on the floor. So we'll keep going. But just so much detail in these. Even, even with a border, so these cards have that kind of neat arced border. So even with that, there's still so much happening in these cards. It's really spectacular. Um, and some of them, wow, oof, that ace of, ace of cups. So moving into the cups, this is a really great example. The, the creators were talking about the fact that, you know, in the cups, it's often a suit where we celebrate, we have joy, we have love, and then the reversal of that can be sorrow and grief and loss. And so they really did a great job augmenting those reversals. And here's a good one to look at for an example of that. So in the booklet, the creators of this deck say that, you know, some of the cards can come across as a little scary. And that's something that can happen when we start looking at the reversed meanings, because typically reversals are considered to mean the opposite of that meaning but they can also mean almost like a an augmentation of it and of course the reversals can also talk about whatever that thing that was happening coming to an end but in this case with this four of cups i love it because it's a great example of how some of the artists really took that idea of the amplification so four of cups you know sometimes that can mean moving a little slow you have some some choices you can make and maybe you're not really tapping into them maybe you're just kind of got a little boredom and, and whatnot, but in this one, it really does show that trapped energy and that stuckness of the amplification of that that we see or that we can see in the reversal. So I think that this deck would be a great one for anybody who wants to work at a little more advanced level, who really wants to tap into the, uh, the oh goodness, that queen, wow, who really wants to tap into the energy of the reversing cards and also just whoever wants like a really dark kind of fantasy gothy deck this is spectacularly gorgeous oh my gosh so so I haven't looked at all of these cards yet so you're getting me actually I love that six of swords oh love that art and what's oh oh my gosh the next one what's really cool about this too is if a card comes up and you're like oh I love that so much you can check out the guidebook and then find the artist and go and support the artist or follow them and, and give them some love too. So that's really great as well. Oh, that seven of swords, right? Mm, great energy. That seven of swords talking about, you know, trust and manipulation and, and thievery, trickery, right? And I love this because this really, really kind of speaks to that place of you know, we, so often when that seven of swords comes up, we ask like, oh, great, you know, who's going to trick me or who's going to, who's, who's, who's not being honest or am I even hiding something? And here we have that, that reversal energy of, of all the swords that you put into yourself when you're not being honest, right? Oh, beautiful. We got the eight, nine. Oh, and that 10. Absolutely. The interesting thing about the 10, here's another one that kind of shows that that idea, um, some of the ideas that come in the reversals. Here in the 10, we have the person, um, either you can think of this as stabbing themselves, so you have that reverse energy of actually doing it to themselves, 
Or you could look at that as pulling it out of themselves and some of the other swords are out as well. So perhaps they're coming to the end of that. So a really great way to express that as well. Have some more of the swords. Oh, that queen, cool. ooh, that queen is gorgeous. The king, and these are, so, so if you're the kind of person that likes your tarot to be a little bit more like happy and cute, I have a deck. I will be review, reviewing one, one soon, I promise. That's kind of the, the opposite of this one, but this one is, it's, it's pretty dark. It's pretty, um, there's, there's some blood, there's some, some nudity, there's some, um, I guess you could say like some intense adult scenes. It's very fantasy, you know, it's, it's very, very much, um, speaks, I think, to, to the life experience where everything isn't, isn't beautiful and, and happy. So it's kind of got some more of that, that energy that we can look at to really explore the shadow and the darkness of life. Ah, oh, so good. I love it already. So I'm going to have a lot of fun playing with this deck. If you decide that you would like a copy of the Corrupted Tarot. You can get it on Wormwood's site. I believe they're still taking taking um, orders for it. They, I believe you have to put it in as a pledge. I'll pop the link into the description. And um, yeah, just really, really beautiful deck. I hope you all enjoyed that quick little um, walkthrough. Again, if you are looking for a deck to really play with and, and explore those shadow themes, this is this is a great one for that.